I'm David Moldauer, an editor here at Portfolio, and I'm joined today by Hugh McLeod, artist and author of Ignore Everybody and 39 Other Keys to Creativity. Today we're going to be talking about uh, career advice from unusual perspectives. So uh, I think uh, for people who aren't familiar with you, can you talk a little bit about the kind of art that um, that you do? I know you do a, a bunch of different uh, kinds and you've been branching out a little bit lately, but what was it that put you on the map and how did you, uh, how did you do it? Well, I, I'm really a cartoonist. I've never really liked the word artist, but that's that's a personal bug of mine. I drew cartoons in college when I was a kid and realized that it was there wasn't very much money in it unless you got extremely lucky. So I went and got a job writing TV commercials and radio commercials for an advertising industry for many years. And in my around 1997, I moved to New York. I got this great job in New York at writing TV commercials, but it wasn't much fun. And uh, I, for whatever reason, I just started doodling on the back of business cards and just started thinking I'd, you know, draw maybe a couple dozen of them. And anyways, 12 years later, I've draw, drawn well over 5,000 of them. And I started putting them on, I started a blog in, in 2001, uh, gapingvoid.com, which, is, you know, makes me a pretty early adapter. And I started writing, you know, just posting them online. And I guess I built up a, a following over the years and uh, started writing on the blog as well. And, and that kind of turned into the, the writings I did start turning into the book deal I now have with you with Ignore Everybody, which is basically began life on my blog as a 10,000 word essay. <laughs> and it's a terrific book. Um, I, I enjoyed it very much. But going back to what you said about being an early adopter, uh, back in 2001, uh, which is right around when I, dis- I discovered it. Shortly thereafter, um, w- after your creation of the blog, um, that was a very ex- that was a very unusual thing, particularly uh, for cartoonists or artists or whatever word you want to use. Uh, that that was a niche that that hadn't uh, made all that much progress into the realm of blogging that I could see. But no. you you sort of discovered it and uh, leveraged it, and and the rest is history, as they say. How did you how did you discover it? And how, what would you say to somebody today? Where where are the uh, open frontiers today for? Uh, another cartoonist or another person who's looking to break out of their category. Well, there's no pat answer to that. I think I think if you want to do anything interesting in marketing, you've got to figure out a way to talk to the market in a way that it hasn't been talked to before. I always see language as uh, I mean, I always see marketing as a form of uh, language and uh, mythology. And I, you know, if you look at how people can remember when the Far Side came out. And how different it was from all the other comics in the uh, newspaper strips at the time. Mm-hmm. It just had this kind of different thing. And I don't think you just wake up and, and just say, okay, today I'm going to be different because that's my marketing edge, y'all. It's more you, you end up in a place where what you're doing is different anyways. The thing is, when I started doing cartoons with back of business cards, I already had a pretty well-paying job in New York. And I was pretty happy with my career at the time. And I didn't want to quit it to go off and become a bohemian cartoonist guy. I just And I, you know, I like going out a lot because I live in Manhattan. And I just wanted a very portable art form. And at first, I was just drawing a sketchbook. And one day, I had forgotten my sketchbook. I was at a coffee shop. And I still wanted to draw. So I had some business cards on me. I said, oh, I'll just draw on the back of these. Why not? And I actually found it a very agreeable medium just because it's it's cheap and easy and simple. And, you know, it, it's not like a big old painting where you spend months working on it. It's no good. You're just crushed. It's just like, okay, this is pretty good. I'll keep it. Or, oh, this is pretty rubbish. I think I'll just tear it up. You know, there was this kind of lightness of touch. And, and, th- and that's what I like about blogs as well. It's kind of cheap, easy, and, th- and unlike paper and pen, it was global. So cheap, easy, global. Because of the simplicity of the format, it translates onto the web page very well. It's not a scaled down, ver- the image is not like scaled down. It's the image you see online, 400 pixels, that looks like that pretty much on the computer screen is about the same size as, a, as an original. So there's no kind of uh, disconnect between what you're seeing online or the, the disconnect between what you're seeing online and what you're seeing in reality is, is fairly narrow compared to other media. So in other words, you currently, you, you, you have this medium that you've sort of uh, claimed for yourself in a certain way. I mean, there are people who do index cards, but the business cards yeah. thing She is, came after me, by the way. I know. I doing, yeah, but I, I'm happy with that. In fact, I'm surprised there's... Uh, not more people doing drawings on business cards on the internet because it's such a great medium for it. Looking at that, I think there's two takeaways that you're, you're if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's two takeaways you're giving us, which is one, don't go into it trying 
to uh, be special in a certain, you know, don't, don't go into it as a gimmick. You know, you picked up business cards right. because it suited you, not because you said, oh, this'll, this'll be a great hook. And at the same time, right. you had to be open to it once you had started doing it and just for yourself, you had to be open to that and say, you know what, even though the guy at uh, Cartoonist University, you know, would say this is not the, this is not how we do things. This is not the medium we right. work with. You had an open mind about it and that's how you found this category for yourself. Well, yes, and I also remember when I first started doing it, it had a certain, the fact, there was a certain deliciousness about the fact that it was futile, that it wasn't commercial, that nobody would like it, no cartoon editor would publish them. It was just kind of for me and, you know, just to show around to people at bars or parties or friends or whatever. You know, it was, it was really, I really was doing it for myself at the time. And, you know, I really didn't care if other people didn't like it. In fact, I expected most people not to because as I, this was, you know, the Internet was still in its infancy back then. You still, people's ideas of cartoons were, was still what you saw in newspapers, what you saw in The New Yorker. And I, I, that life, that, that path didn't interest me at all. Think of all the great acts in life that started off as complete acts of futility, like, you know, some guy deciding to build PCs instead of mainframes in the 70s or... Jackson Pollock deciding to use splatter paint instead of kind of formal, you know, photorealism painting skills. You know, Kerouac writing all this kind of crazy, unreadable stream of consciousness Zen prose in the 50s. Or Bob Dylan, you know, writing these kind of can't play guitar, can't sing very well, but he's going to do it anyways. I, I think a lot of successful ventures started off as acts of futility, as acts of not so much trying to please the market, but trying to please the person creating them. Well then, let's look at it. Uh, if we if we take as a given that you know everyone, if they're going to if you're going to be a, a really groundbreaking artist, you know there's no teaching that strategy to someone else, and you find it. So let's talk to those people who have found it, and whether or not it's an artistic creation or something about them that's special, something about them that they bring value to. Um, how would you suggest? Because you've done, I think, a, a remarkable job of, of of marketing yourself. Even since then, even after once you established the blog and and built a name for yourself, you've gone well beyond that um, original sort of audience. And I think I know that to you, sometimes marketing is a little bit of a dirty word, and then sometimes it isn't. What would you suggest to someone else out there who has their own thing and they really want to share it with people? What strategies could you recommend for building their audience, networking, getting their name out there? I think the most effective way. I mean, yeah, there are, there are you know, the, the the internet is awash with tips and suggestions how to build traffic. But I think I think what mattered, I think what made it work for me is I was doing stuff that I was truly interested in and I truly liked to do, and I was talking to people I, I also found interesting. It's, you know, especially uh, if you go back to the, the early days of the blog or blogging, you know, the early two thousands. There are a lot of kind of real groovy freaks on it, like Dave Weiner, or Joy Ito, or you know, Doc Searles. They're all these kind of crazy guys who had these really passionate ideas, and I found reading their stuff very compelling. Uh, Seth Godin's a good example. His stuff is just I, – I, I, when I first came across Seth Godin's website, I had no idea who he was. But I said, my God, this guy's interesting. He can really write, you know, and he's got some really great ideas. And that kind of excitement, I think, is what leads to success. When you, when you get excited about something – and you can create excitement in others, and you can also, and this is key too, be excited about what other people are doing, not necessarily, and not necessarily other cartoonists or whatever, other lawyers, other consultants, but you know, people who are, you know, all this excitement, all this passion we do, all this work we do with passion, it's all prayer to the same God. You know, whether we're talking about music or building something useful or, or making cartoons, we're all that passion is, is, you know, we're trying to connect with something much bigger than ourselves, and I think, I think. I think is that is that passion and that that kind of that desire to connect with something bigger than yourself is what is is what's going to make you successful more than just you know all those oh start a newsletter get yourself on Twitter I had some pretty good success marketing wine about three years ago with a South African brand called Stormhook and I knew nothing about wine I knew a little bit but not not enough really I just found a certain delight in trying to trying to do it if that makes any sense but what was interesting to me about wine was the conversations around it, whether we're talking about my particular brand or whether you're having a nice glass of wine and you're with a friend and, and you're discussing the meaning of life into the wee hours. That kind of stuff's beautiful. And the wine is just an object that allows or helps facilitate that human connection. So, yeah, if you look at the really, really successful blogs, they're all wildly passionate and wildly, you know, into connecting with other people in a genuine way. It's not just, they're not in it just to quote unquote create content. Those those people are a dime a dozen. So, and also you have to be good at what you do. You, you can't be passionate. and It's really hard to be passionate and kind of market a direct product. 
you know, the old, the old linguist passion and authority. You know, you have to be coming from a place where you're doing good work with love and excitement. And that's what people gravitate to. We want to read, we want to be more loving, we want to be more passionate, we want to be more exciting, we want to be more interesting. And so we gravitate to people who allow us to become that or allow us to aspire to that more easily. This is such valuable advice, and uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. That's gapingboy.com. And the yeah. book is also terrific, Ignore Everybody, um, yeah. which is coming out June 11th. June 11th. Oh, pre-order. So go out and yeah. on Amazon, pre-order it, or just wait and buy it in a bookstore. Hugh McLeod, thank you very much for joining us. You're very welcome, sir.